governments to reject the wood fiber LNG project and its associated pipelines and tankers. Yeah. Yeah. No wood fiber LNG! No wood fiber LNG! It's a pleasure, an absolute pleasure to host this town hall meeting as your member of parliament and to take responsibility as we deliver on our commitment to open accessible government and in particular a renewed environmental assessment process. I should say I'm Pamela Goldsmith-Jones. I am the MP for West Vancouver, Sunshine Coast, Sea to Sky Country. Federal Environment and Climate Change Minister McKenna may either sign off on the review process because she is satisfied with it, or if she isn't, she will refer the matter to Cabinet with her reasons why. This water cooling system is going to destroy uh, life as we know it, in, in the marine life in House Sound. It's a water cooling system that's been banned elsewhere. Wood fiber doing it cheaply wants to do it that way. We would prefer they not do it that way. Um, the greenhouse gases, a million tons of GHGs in our atmosphere. After we went to Paris and our own minister said, we will sign on to no more than two degrees and try for one and a half. Why are we developing a uh, fossil fuel industry, a new one, and exporting our GHGs elsewhere in the world? I can't see why. <laughs> Thank you. No wood fiber allergy. We have better ways to make a living. We live in a completely different time. We live in one of the most unique, spectacular places in the world. I travel the world. I've been in some of the most remote areas and everybody thinks the same. They have family, they want to be healthy, they look at things, they look at their children and they want to preserve something that reaches beyond our brief lifetime. And let's make sure that we do it here. And let's reassure the people that were based on resource extraction income, many of them that are hurting now, that are unemployed, and try to remind them that if they stick to the program, life will get way better for them, for us, and for our kids. That's all I have to say. Uh, but I'm speaking as a, a father today. I'm speaking about a small but significant part of this, and that's the proposed site of the Mount Mulligan compression station. I moved to this town and learned that there was a proposed site for a downtown industrial compression station that was going to be electrically powered. Uh, now I'm hearing there's going to be a twin turbine gas-powered compression station above the elementary school in Valley Cliff where my children attend school. Uh, this reeks to me that Fortis is trying to save money uh, and the only thing that they're doing for me and my family is putting the station over a bluff so that we can kind of forget that it's there. But, you know, there's, what's at stake for my family is nothing less than the, the air my children breathe and the water they drink. I worked on the wood fiber ferry from 94 till the wood fiber plant closed. When I started there, we never had to clean our sea strainers because there was no light. There was no barnacles, there was no mussels, there was no seaweed at the wood fiber site or at Darrell Bay. About five years in, we started getting growth in the boat after they had started doing all the environmental cleanups at the mill. Sorry, I get a little emotional here. This sound is on a recovery. The only thing that WLMG will do will kill that recovery. Um, they have to use fire retardant around the uh, plant because that's a uh, very vol volatile process they're going through and a defoliating agent. Both of those are products are going to be washed into our watershed and we're going to have carcinogens in our watershed so Fortis can save some money. This should have, this should be over with. We shouldn't be talking about this anymore. And we got to get on with it. If your government expects to get elected next time, we should get on with alternatives to this nonsense. This is, communities decide 
on whether or not projects like this go through. And I think you're going to find that it's going to be overwhelmingly this community says no. We all need this stuff. I became fundamentally opposed to the then project. When this project came forward, I again knew to research and became absolutely opposed to the proposed wood fiber LNG. Real change requires really changing. Please say no to wood fiber LNG. Thank you. This man is a cohort of Suwaka. He is a crook. He is actually being fined by the U.S. government for extortion and tax evasion. Who are we getting in bed with? We are responsible for our environment. There is no reason why foreigners should come in here and dictate what happens with our environment. Good day, everybody. My name is Joyce Williams. I come from the traditional village of Way We Come, which is in the Skohomish territory. My ancestors have been here for thousands of years. We're stewards of the land. I've been doing a lot of work as soon as I found out about this project. Researching, sharing it with my people, bringing the information to our people. It's, it's not our way to support something that is also affecting our relatives up north. God forbid our land should be devastated. And the children ask, what did you do to stop it? Some of the people in this room were probably a bit frustrated with me for a while because I was kind of looking strongly in favor of, of LNG. Um, but the more I learned, the more I realized this just doesn't make any sense. To contain global warming to the limits agreed upon at the COP21 event in Paris, we have to cut our greenhouse gas emissions twice as fast as we previously thought. BC LNG is 27% worse than Chinese coal. We're not going to stop using fossil fuels tomorrow, but we need to start the transition to renewable energy today and use our remaining fossil fuels wisely. Yes. Yes. And the first step to achieve that is for the federal government to say no to the proposed wood fiber LNG project and the associated Forks BC pipeline proposal. Now is the time for bold leadership. Please say no to wood fiber LNG. They're not doing their history of what has happened in this land, and that's what they need to do, and we do not support this project. So, I grew up in Truro Park, Alberta, um, which was, I, I used to walk out of my gym in the morning, and I'd see refineries everywhere, and, you know, everyone just thinks they have a great lifestyle, and it's no problem, but, one day I decided I'm not driving to work anymore, I'm looking at refineries, I'm just not doing this. So I chose Squamish because I wanted clean air and I wanted to look at, and I wanted to look at the mountains. We are our environment, there's absolutely no separation. And there's nowhere like this in the world. Absolutely nowhere, you can fly to Hawaii, you can fly all around the world, and as soon as you turn that corner around Squamish and you see the chief and you see Garibaldi, and you, it's, it's a freaking miracle that we have whales. Like, do you people even realize how special that? I want my son to grow up knowing that we stood up for, for this place, regardless of what our opinion is, whether you're for this or against it. Personally, I'm against wood fiber LNG. I was initially uh, positive about it when I first heard about it. I was like, oh wow, we've got uh, we've got got some jobs and we've got the cleanest LNG in the world. I mean. What's to lose? And the more I learned about it, the more I learned that wood fiber and LNG doesn't remotely fit the values or the environment that we live in. So in the absence of a federal government that protects fish habitat and handing over the provincial government who does not have any responsibility on the marine section, I don't see how our voice is heard at the local level. So I really want to see the nuts and bolts and the meat of this brought back at the federal level. I have studied the beaches along all of Howe Sound, including Mill Creek, including Wood Fiber. We have found juvenile schnook making very good use of those beaches. Uh, we know very well that the herring are making use of that area. 
we know right now there is no protection under the herring. They aren't even acknowledged. So this is a, a huge gap in the knowledge base of this forage fish being such an integral component of our whole ecosystem. Um, I'm going to go a little bit to the economy of the whole wood fiber LNG. We talked a little bit in the past about uh, wood fiber, uh, the pulp mill, and uh, it had a very vibrant community, very huge economic driver in the town of Squamish. I'm not seeing the same with this proposed WLNG. I see it being Asian interest, Asian employees, very minimal employment opportunities for our local community. I'm also hearing a lot of talk about compressor stations, Fortis pipelines and hydroelectricity. I live right beside the hydro corridor that serviced wood fiber all these years and had very low voltage going through those power lines. I moved into my community knowing what was coursing through those power lines. I am extremely concerned that if this LNG goes forward, what voltage is now going to be passing right in the middle of Brackendale, affecting hundreds of houses. We have heard nothing along those lines. We had uh, how sound. Uh, pulp and paper mill with, with fiber spewing all that toxic odors that we call the smell of money. I don't want to go backwards to these big industrial polluters.